Okay, folks, what's up? Rich Van Tassel with you. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2017. Uh, I saw the news of this yesterday. I wanted to see what the reaction, or in this case, lack of reaction, there would be to the situation. Uh, I was expecting this would happen, and that's why I'm doing the video now. Uh, again, ESPN showing their double standard and... Uh, I'm I'm stunned by this one, but I have some ideas why they might not be covering it. But uh, for those of you who don't know, MMA fighter War Machine, that's his name now. I don't even, uh, something like Hoffenheimer is his real name, but he legally changed his name to War Machine. He was dating uh, a porn actress. Uh, she goes by Christy Mack. You know, um, this, was, this case has been in the news a little bit, but certainly not getting the coverage. Uh, at all, which I'm surprised for ESPN. Uh, he was just convicted yesterday, like 29 counts. Uh, he avoided the attempted murder counts, but he, you know, he beat her, uh, the guy she was dating at the time. Like he just showed up at her house, beat them both, silly. Um, you know, really messed her up. I'll put a link of the photos, um, or, or a link with an article of the photos of how bad he he beat her. Uh, supposedly tried to rape her afterwards. Uh, all this, like, went to a, to the kitchen to get a knife. He had to flee. He was eventually apprehended. This was, like, 2014. And then he was finally convicted yesterday, and now he's awaiting sentencing. Now, on ESPN, uh, especially First Take, but also Mike and Mike, I was checking both of these this morning. Uh, outside the lines, I'll have to see later if they do anything about it. But certainly, ESPN, and especially on First Take, Molly Count. Molly Kerham uh, has, you know, been a crusader for the most part against domestic violence, which is fine. But uh, one of the big things to me is the deal that they've made of uh, most recently, especially Joel Mixon, who also, uh, I guess his was maybe 2015, 2014, 2015. For those of you who don't know Joel Mixon, of course, he's, or is, I don't know if it's Joe or Joe Mixon. Uh, O-E or O-E-L, I believe it's just Joe Mixon. He was a running back for Oklahoma. Uh, he A few years ago, he punched a woman in the face at a bar, uh, you know, completely just shattered her face, you know, as you would expect a, a guy, you know, an athletic guy like that could do, could generate some power. You know, he wasn't invited to the NFL Combine recently. He's, of course, preparing for the draft. There's talk, you know, and, of course, ESPN uh, on first take, especially Mike and Mike was doing the same things. They were commenting on why he was not invited to the Combine, commenting as well, you know, should he be drafted. Uh, there's, I guess there's maybe mixed opinion as to uh, all things being equal, taking out the situation of what happened, of course, it's caught on video where he would be drafted. Some project him as a possible first rounder. That's really most of what I've been hearing. Uh, it's hard to necessarily gauge where he would be, you know, taking that out because, of course, that's part of the situation. But we're looking at a, you know, a first, second round pick uh, without that. And then there's talk of whether he should be drafted, this, that, and the other thing. And Molly Kerum especially, she, you know, makes reference to domestic violence. She talks about how big of an issue domestic violence is, how it needs to be talked about. The case with Joe Mixon, though, really is not domestic violence in any form. Why? Just because a guy hit a woman? I mean, all indications were that he and this woman were not dating. Uh, all indications, from what I'm understanding, is this was the first interaction those two had ever had was at that bar. You know, we can get into you know, splitting hairs and the semantics of it, you know, she did hit him first, you know, people can argue that, I don't, I don't even necessarily want to, to go down that road, you know, I've made it pretty clear, my opinion is once you hit somebody, I don't care who you are, male or female, you, you give up the right to then claim you shouldn't be hit in return, now, with that being said, I've always maintained the case, if you're a guy, you need to do everything possible to not hit a woman, uh, you know, Really, for no other reason than this is the backlash you'll have of it. In this day and age, you're not going to be able to win that situation, especially when you shatter her face the way he did. You know, you're, you're going to get the backtrack. I'm not necessarily, you know, holding Joe Mixon accountable for that. I'm just saying that's where I look at it. Once, you know, male, female, whatever you are, once you hit somebody, you've then uh, relinquished your right to then claim you can't be hit in return. But with that being said, if you're a guy, you have to try to do your best to not hit someone in return. And I don't think Joe Mixon needed to hit her certainly in the situation. I think a lot of it may have been reflex, but that's besides the point here. Um, 
you know, in comparison between Joe Mixon and War Machine, one is not domestic violence at all. It's just not, you know, Joe Mixon is not a domestic violence situation. It's a situation where, you know, two people were acting out of control at a bar. You know, there was a lot of talk they have on the video. She was, you know, like, it looked like she was egging him on. She was calling him over to the table. You know, he followed her into the restaurant, uh, the bar, whatever. I don't know what was going on outside. Uh, he claims that, you know, she was saying racist things. A lot of the people are actually backing up Joe Mixon and story but regardless regardless of what you think whether a male should hit a female regardless of whether he hit her he hit him first uh whether or not he should have retaliated whatever my personal beliefs are on the situation that's not the point here the point is those two were not in a relationship they were not uh together this was you know two people who got two young people especially who got out of hand and it resulted in joe mixon hitting her in the face this war machine situation this is domestic violence you know there's no there's no ambiguity about it i mean uh now granted they weren't dating at the time but they were previously in a relationship the reason he went there was because he probably i mean he might have been stalking or who knows how he figured out uh she was dating another guy it's probably not even that hard especially in the day of social media and people uh in the public eye such as she is uh, he went there and damn near killed her. Damn near killed the other guy as well. So there's no there's no room for uh, any any argument, any other discussion as to one being domestic violence, one being not. And Molly Karam has specifically referenced the Joe Mixon situation and said this needs to bring light uh, domestic violence. Well, how are you how are you going to look at that situation, but not even mention War Machine? Now, I have some ideas as to why they're not mentioning it. Um, you know, whether ESPN is leaning towards a feminist thing, certainly I would have my suspicions they are. Uh, my understanding, I haven't done much uh, investigation into it, is that feminists look down on uh, women who participate in porn. I don't know why, considering, you know, some of the things that feminists preach, but whatever, I'm not even going to get into that. I guess that could be part of it. Uh, I know Dana White is a very good friend of the show. He's been on the show. Uh, War Machine was in MMA, but I, I can't imagine that's the situation. I would imagine that Dana White would probably be trying to distance himself from this situation. So who knows, you know, where it goes in that regard, but I, I'm very confused, especially since ESPN as well has, you know, I, I don't know if they've ever come out and necessarily said white privilege uh, directly, but certainly they had the show where they were doing the thing in Chicago. They had all that, you know, uh, talking about gun violence. They had Isaiah Thomas, uh, the former Detroit Pistons, IAH, Isaiah Thomas, not the guy currently playing for the Celtics. You know, he made a case that white silence is, is violence, talking about how, you know, white people aren't sticking up, uh, you know, to, to quell uh, racial tensions, racial violence, uh, police, you know, uh, police on black crime, that sort of thing. So certainly ESPN has come in in the you know the the black white conversation you know uh the white privilege situation all those sort of things well what does this say joe mixon was a young black man and he's getting the runaround war machine was a white guy and there's no comment of it uh, war machine has just want to make this uh quickly uh quick note he has the potential to serve his the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole uh he beat the attempted murder charges still got 29 counts i believe kidnapping uh is one of the big things that's going to do him in in that regard but you know war machine a white guy clear domestic violence beat her down joe mixon we're talking about a guy who you know hit a woman Whatever, whatever you want to make of the situation, I don't, you know, people can argue that. Certainly, it's one of the cases where you can look at it and say, uh, you know, this is one of the situations where you can't just be like, oh, there's no excuse for hitting a woman in this situation. There were a lot of things going on with that. But Joe Mixon is not domestic violence at all, and they're trying to make that case. They're trying to push that narrative with a young black guy as opposed to a clear-cut case of, you know, a maniac. More machines of a maniac. There's no other way around it to guy. You know, they argued that uh, Roy Rage was the reason he did it. 
So it's not even like I'm saying anything that's uh, that's out of turn. That was his defense in the case. But clear domestic violence, you know, after he broke up with a woman, went there, beat her, and tried to rape her. And, of course, we'll show the pictures. He beat her up pretty good. You know, she was missing teeth, bru like lacerated liver, bruised spleen, you know, could barely walk because she had a deep thigh bruise. And not a word about it from ESPN. So, you know, we can discuss the reasons why they didn't do it. We can discuss whether it's the relationship with Dana White, whether it's because uh, the feminist agenda may not look highly upon um, you know, uh, porn, pornographic actresses. I don't know what the case is. You know, they did, they talked about Donald Trump on this one and the Colin Kaepernick situation on this most recent episode. They, were, they didn't even come close. They didn't even try to broach the subject. So I'm very surprised. You know, I would hope people at first take would watch this. You know, I tried to get on the show. I participated in their contest. I, I, you know, I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, of course they had Stephen A. Smith playing his show clown about how much he hates the Cowboys. I used to like Stephen A. Smith. He used to be good. He's just become, you know, the show clown on that show. Max Kellerman, I don't agree with what he says necessarily most of the time, but you know, he, he still argues pretty much, you know, on point uh, as far as his beliefs, and he, he usually puts forth a pretty good argument. And Molly Karam herself, sometimes she's very good, sometimes I, I enjoy the point she makes, but in this case, she really dropped the ball. She's going to be this crusader for domestic violence, and she's not even going to bring this up, but, you know, hammer Joe Mixon. But I'm very surprised by that. So hopefully people will watch this and we'll see what happens from there if this will start a discussion. But not a word by either Mike and Mike or ESPN First Take about the war machine convicted again on 29 counts, including kidnapping uh, for his assault on Christy Mack, former pornographic actress. All right, remember, we appreciate all subscriptions as well. Going to be back this weekend with the NBA reports, the Celtics report, uh, and possibly an NBA in-depth, the weekly report, all that stuff. So be sure to stay tuned. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.